<laughs> awesome. All right. So uh, welcome to our uh, webinar today uh, about temperature check. I'm super excited about this one, especially getting going after uh, the beginning of the new year. And uh, I'm here with Brian Slater. He's an experienced classroom teacher. Uh, he's taught high school social studies in Tacoma, Washington, Lagos, Nigeria. That was cool to read. Uh, and Sumner, Washington since 2002. And he currently teaches IB 20th century topics, advanced leadership and theory of knowledge uh, to 10th to 12th graders at Sumner High School. That's kind of like a big mouthful. Um, but the key is that uh, Brian's passion centers on helping teachers and students understand the importance of relationships that they play in developing a culture of learning and trust in the classroom. And that's exactly why we're here today. And so, uh, Brian, I'm super excited that uh, you, me. you are here with us. <laughs> uh, and I know that, you know, the temperature check is something that we talk about in all of our trainings uh, and PD and one of it's just like uh, one of the staple uh, relationship building um, strategies that we use and uh, we're very thankful because you were the one that brought it to us. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm a uh, big fan of the serve staples, you know, starting intentionally. This is where we're at right here. So exactly right. Uh, so excited about this. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to we're going to dive in. Um, let us know on the side here. You can see those of you um, who are joining us and we have we have over we have 55 people already oh. that are joining us. So this is super exciting. Good, good. Um, and so please, you can see on the side, let us know, introduce yourself, tell us where you're watching from, um, send questions our way uh, at any time. And uh, we'll make sure that uh, Brian gets them. If they don't get answered within the webinar, don't worry about it. We will make sure that they do get answered. Um, and uh, and they come directly to me. So all your messages are are, are private, I'll be able to see them and we'll make sure that uh, that Brian hears them. Um, and so we have, uh, let's see, we have, who we got with us? Alexis from Waco, that's awesome. And we have somebody from Missouri, uh, Odessa joining us. Um, Margaret is in, was from, a native from Washington, but now lives in Northern um, Michigan. We have somebody from Pennsylvania. Jeez. Wow, this is awesome. We are right. from, we have Aubrey from California. We have from Kenwick. We are Wisconsin. Brian, this is cool. We got we have people from all. Yeah, I don't know about Wisconsin. I mean, we got a big uh, Seahawks <laughs> game against the Packers coming up soon. Uh oh. Uh oh, don't we'll eat. <laughs> no way for just through Sunday, please. We'd appreciate uh, that. But, <laughs> we'll share we'll share the, the joint educator love, but not the football yeah. love. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so welcome. Uh, we're really excited that you are all joining us today. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get dive. We're going to dive right in. Uh, so kind of setting our our tone and our framework. Um, uh, Character strong. We talk a lot about culture and climate, and uh, so often in education, that word culture, those two words actually get thrown around a ton. Uh, and sometimes we think of culture. It's kind of this kind of huge abstract. Uh, uh, picture. And, um, we want to make sure that we're uh, honing in on um, on what that is and making it so that it's not so abstract, that it is something that we have a clear vision and purpose for. Um, and the way that we look at that um, is to get super focused, hyper focused on um, four categories. And um, and that is what our, our, our theory of change uh, is around. And so the first one is that school wide integration. What are you doing, um, specific elements of practice uh, that um, aim to integrate into the entire, the whole school? So how are you going about um, changing that culture through your school-wide integration? Um, the next one is those adult relational practices. We know that the work we do is a relational work. The core of everything that, that we do is relational. Um, and if we can build those relationships uh, and uh, really, uh, tap into each other and what are the kind of strategies and approaches that we hope we have around that for us it's our serve model um, then we can really start changing that culture and then we have our advisory or tier one which is what is the content that every single person is getting on your campus and so what are those practices and elements 
uh, that aim to ensure that each and every student receives explicit quality instruction to learn social emotional skills. And they're just that. Social emotional learning means that they're skills, competencies to be learned. And that means that we have to be the ones to teach them. Um, and so it's something that they can learn. Uh, I think that we forget that character can be taught. Uh, and building, blending that um, social, emotional, and character education together uh, is what we really focus on um, at Character Strong. And I know, Brian, that that's something that you do a lot in your class. Um, even have the privilege of having a couple of your former students that uh, work with Character Strong and talk right. a lot about about that and what that meant to them and what that um, the impact that they had. And that's been really cool on my end to see that. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> Uh, and then our student leadership. So you have the tier one, which is everybody. And then student leadership, are you pulling a small group um, or a, a good sub group? And is it representative of everybody on your campus? And so, and that's one of the, the key things. And are we looking at leadership a little differently? You know, what, is, what does it mean to be a leader and what role does character play in that? Um, it's kind of counter culture in some ways um, when we look at leadership. Uh, this way, and yet we know that that is what um, really changes and impacts the school culture that we want so that kids have the climate, the feeling um, that we want them to have, feeling safe and um, included. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to hone in on those adult relationship practices. Mm -hmm. And again, that's our serve model. Uh, so starting intentionally, engaging relationally, um, responding with empathy, values practiced consistently and exiting intentionally. And uh, and so we're super excited to dive into our engage relationally please with our um, temperature check. And uh, again, we're looking forward to your questions. Um, I just wanted to give a big uh, overview, kind of that 50 foot look um, before we hone right in um, here, Brian, with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll let you take over and dive okay. in. And I'll throw questions at you when they come. Uh, please let us know what you're thinking and what you'd like us to, to ask and yeah. tell us what you do. Brian, how to get started. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, thank you all for joining us uh, again. My name is Brian Slater, I'm classroom teacher at, at Sumner High School, a little town about uh, 40 minutes or so south of Seattle, Washington. I'm at school right now. I'm kind of bouncing around between uh, empty rooms as I can find them. We're going to have passing period here. Actually, it's happening right now. So forgive me um, if you see a little movement in my background. It's because I'm moving around uh, just being a teacher right uh, in the trenches with you all viewers daily. Uh, and, uh, you know, the nice thing about this temperature check is um, it, it actually, you know, it, it covers a lot of the, the serve model. Um, I use it to start intentionally. Uh, I try to uh, gauge the temperature of my students, uh, how they're doing. Uh, once a week or so, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But um, it also allows me to engage relationally with students. My leadership class, for example, has 64 students in it, um, and it makes it difficult to engage relationally with all 64 kids you can imagine, right? Um, it's myself and one of my colleagues, Brandon Wenzel. Uh, we're, we're trying to like, you know, lead our school and teach our students the values of servant leadership mm -hmm. uh, and to keep up with them, you know, with all the other tasks that we're doing here to, to make this high school a place where all people want to be every day of the week. It takes a lot and uh, you can tend to lose the ability to engage relationally with kids um, if, if you're not, uh, keeping, you know, do, working smarter, uh, uh, not harder on getting to know them. And, and so the temperature check is a way I engage relationally and then responding with empathy. Um, I mean, that's when you know how kids are doing uh, another sir, stay before at the door plus one more. Mm -hmm. um, when you do temperature checks, you know um, how to ask them questions. You, you know what questions to ask. Hey, I, you know, how's your dad doing? I know that you said in the check in a temperature check the other day that uh, he was sick with pneumonia in the hospital and is currently fighting lymphoma, uh, which, by, by the way, is a true story uh, that yeah. I just found out on Monday uh, from one of my students just uh, two days ago. And uh, it allows you to just in, uh, respond with empathy to kids. Um, and, you know, these are uh, the values practiced consistently. This is my value. This is my value. I think kids matter. I think kids are important. I think that as they come into our classroom, they're coming into our classroom uh, with all sorts of experiences in the world that have been outside of our control. But now that we have them in our control for one hour, uh, it's our opportunity to give them a place where we can show them what we're about uh, mm -hmm. with our values. And, and one way I do that is through the temperature check. And then I do use temperature checks sometimes to exit intentionally. Um, and so I sometimes will start a lesson 
with the temperature check and then I'll see if I move the needle. Sometimes I'll tell the kids, um, you know, hey, uh, we came in at an average of 2.5 out of 5 uh, on our check-in today, this morning when you came in and let's see if we can move it to a 3 by the end of the period. And I'll do that sometimes, you know, if I if I feel like it's necessary. But I think it's important we maybe start with what the temperature check actually is. Uh, and um, what it is, it's, 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 I like to think of it um, as sort of a, uh, like a heart monitor on my students. Um, I was inspired when my son was born. He was born about nine years ago. They had a nursing station in the middle of the uh, maternity ward. And it was amazing. On every screen, they had uh, every single patient's blood pressure and heart rate. And thought to myself, this is incredible. Um, they, they know everything going on with every patient at every second of the day. Uh, why don't we have this in education? Um, we need to know how our kids are doing. You know, we check the weather when yeah. we go to work. Uh, and it's, you know, it's raining right now here, if you can imagine that in Washington State. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be snowing here in the next couple of days. We're preparing for that, right? I mean, we know it's going to be snowing, so we prepare for it. Um, we should probably know what the climate is and is about to be in our classrooms um, so that we can prepare. Um, yeah. And this time of year in particular, you know, we always talk about that, that week before winter break being a tough week, week before spring break, week before summer break. You know it, right? It's a tough week. Uh, that's when we typically see kids acting out. Uh, what about the week after break? You know, the, the, we ask a question that is almost like socially programmed into us. Hey, how was your break? Um, and that's the wrong question to ask in my opinion. I think the question we need to ask is, how are you? Yeah. And then if the students want to tell us how the break was, they can. Um, if they want to tell us how they are doing, they can. Uh, and, and, and they'll always, you know, when you do this the first time, you can, you can see their um, uh, kind of what this looks like. I usually do a scale of one to five. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and I I always put optional um, for them to elaborate a little further if they want to. Uh, but what, I, what I'm just at this point I'm, I I check with my kids how they're doing, and it allows me to monitor adjust when they come back from break. This last week I'm going to be talking to my staff here in about an hour, um, my colleagues, about what I've experienced this week. And in 18 years, I did a temperature check on Monday, and. Out of 101 responses, I had one in four kids check in at a one or a two. And that is incredibly abnormal. Yeah. Um, and as I started to dig in, and you'll see some examples later on in the presentation, I realized, oh, my goodness, uh, I actually have spent more time in the counseling office in the last two days um, just getting kids to the right resources that they have available to us here at the school than I have in, in probably the last two years combined. So yeah. um, and if I hadn't asked how they were doing. You wouldn't. I can tell you with certainty, I wouldn't have been down in the counseling office at all. And I would still have kids who need an adult, um, who aren't in a place where they're ready to learn, mm -hmm. uh, and yet they're in my room. And uh, and so, yeah. Yeah. You know, you brought up, we actually have a, a question uh, from a school counselor. So what is the role of the school counselors in the temperature check, if at all? And I think you just touched, you know, you touched base on that a little bit. And maybe you could elaborate, um, you know, how do you use your school counselors? Yeah. Well, this is a great question. Um, our school counselors actually have a check in, a temperature check up on the counter at the counseling office all day, every day. Uh, and we use Google. We're a Google district. If you're a Microsoft district, you're able to build Microsoft forms. Um, and all they have, we even use it for our, our guest teachers, our subs. When they get to school, uh, they sign in in the main office using a, a temperature check, Google form. Um, and uh, uh, we have these uh, Chromebooks in our school. And uh, when the student gets into the counseling office, they check in, they do a temperature check and it, it sends an email to their counselor. Uh, uh, so the counselor, kind of like a doctor, you know, like when you're waiting in the doctor's office <laughs> before you go in, they they have all the background, you know, the, the, the nurse nurses come in, they collect your baseline data and, and, you know, any concerns. And then doctor comes in and whoa, they just know everything about you and they haven't even talked to you yet. Uh, well, that's because of the work behind the scenes, and that's what our counseling department does. Um, but if I ever see a concern, like I did on Monday, yeah. uh, I immediately connect with the kid. Obviously, I'm not like, hey, so in public, 33 kids, uh, why don't you tell me a little more about this, this really traumatic experience you had uh, last week when you had to save your brother? 
Mm -hmm. uh, when you got home from snowboarding, uh, you got, you know, had to give them CPR. Another true story from from uh, this past Monday. Um, you don't ever do that, but you definitely make it known to the kid via email um, or pull them out into the class, out, out in the hall briefly. Hey, you know, um, let me know I can help. Or you know, after class, uh, do your best to get them down to the resources that you have available at your school. Yeah, and um, you know, I think it, and you touched on this a little bit, but I want to reiterate, you know, that there's the 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 levels of engagement with this. You know, sometimes I hear uh, counselors have been told they've, you know, uh, an administrator or a teacher has heard about our temperature check, mm -hmm. and then um, they're sending all their students immediately to the counselor, mm -hmm. uh, which then could overwhelm the counselor. Versus sure. where you said, you know, you would go touch base or having those moments where you're you're touching um, base with the kiddos, but uh, you know the the idea of it being that relational strategy yeah that, you know and um that it is an, an end to know where our kids are before we even attempt to teach them anything um or to engage them in content yep. uh because if they're not there and you said it you know it's like mm -hmm. they're not going to be really ready to learn if mm -hmm. they're worried about yep. um losing someone or yep. uh, whatever stressors that our kids come to class with on a regular basis. Yeah. And I don't want to paint the picture that there's just all this trauma all the time uh, at all. And that, that's not the case. When I do my temperature checks, um, it's very rare uh, to have some massive situation. Where, oh, my gosh, you know, I, I need to, to mobilize now uh, with this situation. Um, it's not it's not that common. Uh, but what I will in many cases do is I will share with the class the um, I'll say, you know, hey, uh, we have out of 32 kids. I got four kids that checked in at a one or a two today. Uh, I want you to assume that that's the student next to you. Uh, obviously, they're not going to tell you if they checked in at a one or a two. I just want you to assume that it's the person sitting next to you. And let's see if we can move the needle a little bit. And it's amazing what that little comment does to the the um, behavior in my classroom you know, it just it, it allows students to practice empathy as well. Um, it allows them an opportunity to try to empathize with others and and be intentional with their own actions, uh, with their own character and choices uh, in trying to improve other people's day. So I'll do that a lot of times, you know, if I sense that it's pretty low. Yeah. So. Uh, a question came in and said, what's on the Google form? And I'm and that's what this slide is, right? The one that I brought back up. Gotcha. It's the. Uh... Yeah. OK, so uh, real simple. Uh, I asked three questions. Uh, what's your name? Uh, how are you doing? And that's uh, a linear scale question. Uh, when you do question type on Google form, mm -hmm. you would just select linear scale. I always do mine on a scale of one to five. Um, and then I'll usually label a one as terrible, a five as incredible or, or, or any adjective you'd like to to use there. And then I, I always have an optional um, uh, why. Uh, sometimes I'll word it like, you know, um, would love to know why you came in there, but but understand if you don't want to share um, mm -hmm. because it's a privilege to influence kids. It's a privilege to have kids share um, how they're doing. It is not something that we should feel entitled to as teachers. I would argue that, um, you know, that the it's not something that we have the authority to demand from kids that they tell us why they came in. But I do um, have them tell me how they're doing. Uh, that is something that I do demand. Um, and then I will usually, after those three questions, um, put in, you know, formative assessment questions, uh, asking, uh, just checking my own teaching, uh, maybe mm -hmm. a couple quiz questions in there. Um, but I, I never, ever give a quiz or, or any Google form without asking first how they're doing. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward, pretty simple stuff. That's awesome. And you, um, you touched base on this, the, the why behind it, you know, that relational strategy. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, help some people with setting it up. What are some like do's? Yep. Good. So been doing this now, I think seven years I've been using Google um, to, to, to do, I, I, I've always called them check-ins, temperature checks. Uh, mm -hmm. I like check-in, check-out, uh, but we call them temperature check here. Um, and, uh, and, and I've learned a lot over the years of, of doing this. Um, so I'll share with you some of the things I think are really important to do. First and foremost, always have that question, uh, that why question be optional. Um, secondly, attach to that. Never, ever ask a student why they didn't put in their explanation <laughs> uh, because that defeats the whole point. You're going to damage a relationship right there. You don't want to put them in a spot where they have to tell you because you don't get to know. 
Um, you know, like that, it's just right. awkward for kids. Um, and it's a kind of a, uh, you know, we think of it like a consent thing too. You just don't want to demand it. It's not something that we have the authority to demand from kids. Uh, and so don't call it out in class either. Um, you know, don't make it obvious. Uh, and anything that's not a happy birthday or a, a, a please celebrate me kind of thing, like kids will do that a lot. They'll say, hey, we won our soccer game last night. Uh, I was up until 11, though, so I'm a little tired. You know, you can celebrate like, hey, congrats right. on the soccer team. Um, but, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you're 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 being very intentional about preserving those aspects that you've allowed to be optional mm -hmm. uh, when you set this up. Uh, secondly, um, don't ever share any of the personal data with anyone else uh, that's been shared with you other than counselors. Uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, it's it's important that when you you make this spreadsheet that you're doing it on your school account, uh, the Google form on your school account, do it uh, using your official um, school account and not a personal, sorry, That's okay. <laughs> uh, a personal account, you know, don't want to get, you, you know, get yourself in any trouble. I'm doing a lot of more don'ts here than do's, but they kind of go together. There's a corresponding for every do, there's a corresponding don't. Although I think it's, I mean, it, it, it's worth even stating again, the whole idea yeah. of like, we're not entitled to that why. Yeah, correct. You know? And I, and I think that, you know, we can allow ourselves as educators to believe that we are entitled to that why. Mm -hmm. And it's good for us to check in and it's up to them to let us know however much they want to let us know. And I think that that, that you talked about that, that is how you maintain or build trust and safety in that relationship that they're having. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah. And so another thing to do um, uh, is to make sure that, um, that you read all of them. Yes. Um, uh, read yes. every single one. Uh, and they don't, you know, I think when I cover this in, in a lot of, you know, when I'm helping other staff members with it, uh, I find that I think we paint a picture in our head that how do I keep up with that? I got 32 kids and how do you keep up? You know, you got to teach. So how do you how do you manage an inundation of 32? And I think we paint this picture like we're going to get these massive paragraphs and and they're all going to press send at the same time. And that's not how it works. Right. Uh, they trickle in. They truly trickle in. It's no different than watching a Facebook feed update or Twitter Twitter feed update in real time. I, I watch the spreadsheet and they come in and um, and and it's never a burden on my time. Uh, and I'm able to read them as they go. And, um, you know, I'll usually have something for them to do uh, as I'm reading, you know, getting them ready for class. So. So those are the do's. That's awesome. So we have another question is, uh, how have you seen trust play a role in the temperature check? Um, I think that the temperature check has the it, it has overwhelmingly allowed me to build trust. Mm -hmm. And so long as you're using it, and I know the next slide is the don'ts, and maybe I can kind oh, of- I, uh, I, I, I mean, it's kind of, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> as long as you're not, um, you know, there's things that you're going to have to go beyond you and the student with, with the temperature check at times. Uh, and you would handle that in the same way you would handle it if a student shared something with you in person. Um, you you know, we're mandatory reporters. So if we feel like a student is gonna harm themselves or harm someone else, then it's really simple. Hey, you know, thank you so much for trusting me enough to share this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I, I want, I'm gonna take care of you here. We're gonna have to take some action on this. Uh, and that, you know, ha has happened a couple times with me um, where I've had to, you know, take immediate action with the student who told me something. And um, and uh, but I think it builds trust, especially when you start to prove that you're reading them. That is where it gets really cool. Um, and I do that. Usually I prove I'm reading them uh, either at the four at the door plus one more where I'm just asking how they're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm showing them, hey, you know, I noticed yeah, you said like a kid today. Hey, I signed your check in on Monday that you sold some merch at your last concert. Uh, how, how would that go? How much did you sell? What, what do they look like? Could I get a shirt? Uh, you know, little things like that, that yeah. I learned because of the temperature check. Uh, and that builds trust. They're kind of like, man, okay, this guy, like, wow. Okay. He's earning some influence in my life. Um, and that's, that's how leadership works. You know, we, um, I mean, leadership, servant leadership, James Hunter, you know, he defines it as the skill of influencing people uh, to enthusiastically work toward goals identified as being for the greater good with character that inspires confidence. And this is my way of showing the kids uh, my own character and inspire confidence in them so that when I'm in the classroom, they're willing to follow. And we talk about um, uh, classroom management a lot. We don't talk a enough about classroom leadership. And this is one way as a as a teacher to demonstrate classroom leadership um, is really just show them your character, you know? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Sorry, I just realized that I hadn't started the slide so you and I could see them, but nobody yeah. out there could see them. And so that was, I 100% apologize for that. Uh, and so please know everybody in here that you will get the slide decks um, uh, after the, oh, after sure. we're on there. And now you can, yeah. I can control it too, apparently. It makes perfect it's sense fun. now. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens when they let us newbies take over. There you go. <laughs> But it's still the super important stuff uh, that you were talking about. And so um, there was, oh, one other question that came in was, do you share the information with the school counselor if you were worried that there may be cause for concern? And I think that you talked about this. You definitely, like you've said this week, you've already been in there with the counselor talking mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, uh, absolutely, if if necessary. And it's, it's usually, you know, it's interesting because the, the students are usually not sharing that information because they're reaching out for help. Um, they share it so that we can know what's going on. Uh, it, maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I had a student on Monday express they were really concerned about um, the grade and the, their grade in the class because over break they were unable to complete um, the assignments that that so they they actually left a little early for break so i gave them some work to take with them mm -hmm. um and and i you know and, and they expressed that they had some, a pretty traumatic situation in, uh, when they were traveling uh and so in my conversation with the student you know they shared with me the situation and it was not just a traumatic situation it's a situation that any person on the planet if they would have experienced it should be struggling to get their job done uh, and so, you know, but I, I, you know, immediately I'm like, Hey, uh, and it was lunchtime. You know, so I yeah. said, I'm going to take you down. Thank you. know, please trust me. I'm going to take care of you right now, but we need to make sure every one of your other teachers knows what's going on in your life so that we're not coming down hard on you and adding more layers to your, to your life right now that are unnecessary. And so, yeah, that's, you know, that was a situation where, um, the student didn't even, you know, through the conversation that followed the temperature check, uh, I learned more, but I would have never known to ask or even uh, have a conversation without asking the student in the first place, hey, how are you doing? Yeah, and how consistently, so one of the questions that just came through, and I'm sure lots of people are wondering this, like how often do you use that temperature check? Yeah, once a week. Uh, at the beginning of the school year, I do twice a week because I don't know the kids very well yet, and um, and it's an opportunity for me to get to know them a little bit better. Um, I aim for once a week, and what's really funny is the kids make it clear when they need a temperature check. I've had kids before come in and say, Mr. Slater, I need a temperature check. Mm. And I'll say, I'm, I'm literally standing right here, man. Why don't you just tell me? You know, like, no, 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 no. I do way better when I can type okay. it out. Okay, why don't you send an email? No, I need a temperature check. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Give me three minutes. I'll get one sent out to the class in Google Classroom. And, and so I have an actual, my Google Classroom, I have a topic that's just called temperature check. And it has every temperature check from the whole school year in it. Um, and when we talk about data collection, um, it's also, you know, it's, it's a hub of where I can see if all of a sudden the student stops uh, telling me why they're doing, how they're doing. Uh, in many cases, I'll go back and look a couple weeks earlier and see, all right, where did, did I miss something? Uh, it's also a way for me to ask the question, do I need to apologize? Mm. For something? But again, I don't do it in connection with an empty temperature check. I'm like, hey, I noticed you left it empty. What do I need to apologize for? No, right. that's not how I would approach it. That's making it something. Definitely, I'm definitely, you know, a non-response communicates just as much as a response does. Yeah. At a minimum, it tells us you don't have that privilege yet, or you might not ever. Um, right. But that's that's our character. That's our our job to earn that privilege. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you've shared some of these, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that having um, well, there's one question before we dive into the story yeah, or more of the stories. Uh, what percent of your teaching staff do some sort of temperature check? Do you know how many people on your campus or approximately? Um, it's, it is not, it's, it's not something that's mandatory um, on our campus. It's not something that our, our administrator says we have to do this. Uh, um, uh, I don't have a percentage. I just know that I have had I'm, my dream is actually coming true. I said this a couple of years ago. My dream is to have a kid come into my class sixth period or fifth period and say, oh, another <laughs> one? You're the fifth, fifth teacher to ask me how I'm doing today. <laughs> Imagine that, like oh, okay. uh, five teachers asking a kid how they're doing or six teachers. I mean, that's a dream for me. Um, and, and, you know, I would say that uh, why it's important for as many staff members as possible on campus to do this is because there are kids who, ha they don't tell me why. 
they're doing how they're doing and and i'm not going to force them to but there's probably one of their teachers that they do uh have they have bestowed the privilege upon to say why and and if they're not telling me and and there's something that you know they check it in a one temperature check one and the, and and but they don't tell me why you know i may send them an email and say hey i saw you came in at a one i hope that your day gets better something real simple like that but i'm 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 really hoping that another teacher down the road in that kid's day is going to ask them why so that they can express why yeah um, and so you know i i don't know what percent i I, I'm confident it's well over 50% of our staff does. Our admin does it as well. Uh, we're gonna have a staff meeting today after school and they'll they'll give us a temperature check and they're, you know, they read them and, and it's cool because we'll get an email. I'll get an email from my evaluator. Sometimes I'll get an email from two or three of the principals here and and they'll be responsive to my temperature check. And I'll tell you as a leader in my school, as, as they are, yeah. um, that, that type of character where they're showing me commitment, they're showing me respect, they're yeah. showing me um, their kindness, that that earns a lot of influence in my life. And so um, I think that's pretty cool when our admin models it for the teachers. Absolutely, I was just talking about that. I was at a, doing a PD on Monday and I said that, you know, like our admin sending one out is a great way to connect with your teachers and to start building those relationships and trust. Yeah. And trust, and it's hard sometimes when you have yeah. campuses, um, but that's why it's even more important or just yeah. as important. <laughs> Somebody yeah. asked, uh, do you think that it would lose participation if it was pencil paper um, temperature check? Have you ever done uh, it? It definitely would not lose participation. I'll tell you what it does cost you is a lot more time as a yeah. teacher. Um, and, and the other thing is you might lose those stacks of paper. Uh, if those stacks of paper fall into the wrong hands, yes. uh, what happens now? Um, when now you have private data, possibly, you know, private stories, kids did not anticipate you threw in the recycling bin. And, you know, I don't, I'm not, you know, that's a worst case scenario. But um, um, reading through them, I find on a spreadsheet where it's boom, it's a snapsheet. It's all right there in the same place. Sometimes I will uh, at home want to be reading uh, my, you know, I might not get through all of them in the day. And so I will in, in that evening read through them. And what's really nice about the Google form is it's got every single student for the whole day yes. on there. And uh, what that means is I, I'll have a hundred plus um, students with their names and their, how they came in right there on the same spreadsheet. So, you know, it's just for me, it's a way to work smarter, not harder, but absolutely go pencil and paper. If, if you're not comfortable with forms, I mean, the, the, the purpose, still is right. being fulfilled there. Um, so I would say it's better to do it than not do it. Yeah. So whatever just, that works for you. You know, if we have any elementary school teachers on here, you know, even just doing a mm -hmm. one, two, three, or show me on your yep. hand or, yep. uh, you know. I helped a kindergarten build one of these for their uh, Chromebook. And all we did was just a happy face, a straight yep. face and a frown face. And, um, you know, she's trying to teach her kids how to just use a little trackpad on their <laughs> homework, you know, and so uh, it's amazing just the difference, but they, they'll, they'll work with little kids too, um, mm -hmm. you know, so, but uh, Absolutely. yeah, true stories. Uh, so we're gonna look at some of the results that you got, I believe that's yeah. what's coming um, Yeah, so this was last, this was just on Monday. You can see here, you know, 24.8% of kids came in at a one or a two, and then when you add that 27.7, that puts me, over 50%. Um, and, and that's not typical. Um, it, you know, it, it, in many cases, it's a, kind of a bell curve. Obviously, we came out of break. So no surprise that 38 of my 101 kids were excited to, you know, to be back at mm -hmm. school. And, um, you know, uh, it's amazing as you as we look at some of these responses that kids give, it's funny to see the the um, this is an example of kind of what you'll see when you collect the data. You'll have neighboring responses. Yeah, you know, one that's like, man, I'm so happy to be back. I'm so spreading the love of happiness I have right now to everyone else. I'm so glad to be in your class again. And then right above it, yeah, you know, it's, this came in bang bang. It's like I'm reading. I had the worst break of my life. I came home after nine hours of snowboarding to my brother, almost dead in my house. I had to give him CPR. And in an ambulance. He spent a week in the hospital sedated. I'm so lucky I got there on time after being gone all day. And then it's, I had a great break, right? So yeah. in this and, um, and, and I do want those in the audience to know this is after four months of doing check-ins, right? right? This is not what check temperature check number one looks like. They <laughs> do not share these, these long 
post because they don't know you yet and they don't necessarily trust you yet. So they will, in many cases, put little feelers out like it was good. We won the soccer game. And then, I'll, oh, hey, nice job winning the soccer game. Thanks for telling me. It's my birthday. Hey, let's sing happy birthday. Those little things, you know, those little pieces of evidence that you care enough to read them matter. Yeah. And, and a big don't is it, do not give these out if you're not going to read them because yeah. going back to that true story, um, you know, I had uh, a student back um, and I wrote a blog post about this a couple years back uh, for Character Strong. Um, tell me that he was thinking about killing himself the night before. And this was Halloween that I got this temperature check. And, um, and you know, I, I, I often cases, I don't, I don't, I share this story not to scare people away from this thing because it's, it's critically important that a student was able to tell an adult that they were thinking these things. Um, but I, I oftentimes wonder like, what if we hadn't, what if I, what if nobody had asked this young man, but more scary is what if I wouldn't have read it? Yeah, he had done it. Well, we're talking all sorts of stuff here. And again, I don't I don't tell you this to scare anyone away, but um, a massive do is read them all. Um, yeah. You don't have to respond to all of them, but read them. But this young man here I talked to, um, he, you know, about how things were and, and we talked at lunch. And um, but you can see how these things yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of crazy. Like I'm I'm really sick and not mentally ready to be back. My, my grandpa's dog that I grew up with got put down on Saturday. I got dumped last night. I still don't have a car and I have to go to my dad's after school, which I'm not excited about. I'll mm -hmm. also stress about my extended essay, time right, inter internal assessments. We're in IB school. So that's what those acronyms yeah. are there. Um, and then look, hey, I got a haircut. My presentation and, and you know, so um, these are the things that uh, had I not asked, I just wouldn't know. And, um, and it, you know, it, it allows me to empathize some, you know, some of you might be like, I don't want to know that stuff. And that's totally fine. You don't have to know that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, you got some kids in your room that aren't going to be learning a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And um, if they got their head down on their desk and they, they look like they're sleeping and you go over and you'd be like, get your head up, stop sleeping in my class. Well, I'll tell you what you're less likely to do if you did a temperature check and that kid told you that he was up till four in the morning because his dad was beating up his mom. Yeah, I'm not going to take, hey, get your head up and I'm, let me go ahead and pile on to your rough time. Right. Um, and so that's been a huge difference. And every teacher, I had a fifth grade teacher come up to me last year at one of our trainings, character strong trainings and say, I started these temperature checks. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know how I did this job without it before. She said I had to make three CPS referrals as a result of them. And I was not happy to have to make those referrals, but I can't imagine what my kids' lives, my students' lives would have been had I not known. Yeah. And and I have my own in my in my school colleagues here who have said to my face, I just don't know how I would how I do this job without these. Yeah. Um, that is how transformational they are, and they are low burden, high impact. It does not cost you more than three minutes to put one of these together. Yeah. Yeah, and once you make one, you could just, you know, copy for the next day or copy for yeah. the next week. So, yeah, and so. Uh, this is what you talked about earlier. Yeah, and this is, you know, Brian Meyer down in Bastrop, Texas, was down yeah. there, shout out. I don't know if they're here or not. He, uh, I went down to their school two summers ago, led a training. I actually drove through Waco on my way up to um, the colony uh, right outside of Dallas. So shout out to Waco. I did not get to meet Chip and Joanna Gaines, but uh, I did my best to find them. Anyways, he down there, Brian Meyer, does some things um, where he's taken this temperature check and he's added on to it. Um, these are really good ways to ask the questions instead of how was your break? Get kids looking forward to, um, you know, or, or looking in advance at like, what's the best part of the holiday season or the worst part, you know, right. kind of distract away. Um, this is another question that he has asked that I thought was really interesting. I love this one. Uh, it's a really good one. I'm not sure that I would ask it just because it's not really my style. Um, but you know, that's it. Like make the, ask the questions that fit your style, you know, yeah. uh, that, how are you doing should be pretty universal in my opinion. Well, and these uh, are, I think with Brian, with uh, Brian Myers, these are the ones that kind of go out to even a wider variety and sometimes yeah. throw in a question to make it a little different, even like, what's your favorite, uh, like, um, fantasy animal or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. 
like to throw a little something. Yeah, and I'll do that a lot too, you know. I'll 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 put in some fun questions just to know. Um but the, you know, this is an interesting one too and uh one thing I like about what he does is he sh he will share I I get email I actually get his temperature checks. He has me on his mailing list so I get to see what he's doing, which is pretty cool. Um but uh he will sometimes as will I kind of show the chart to the class. Um there's no names attached here. Right. But it helps kids know um that you know, if you're daily and and you're 10% of people that you're not by yourself here. Um, and, you know, weekly 25%, one in four kids. Wow. And this also is an indicator that, wow, we got a lot of tears flowing here in this place. Maybe we should ask why or, or let kids know that we're there for them. Um, but, you know, that's another way around it that you can just learn. Uh, it looks like we have a pretty even tier distribution. So <laughs> you know, showing the image to his class of where people were. And it's just a way to just show people, hey, we're paying attention to you. Yep, we, we care about you. And we'd love to know how you're doing. So, uh, so we have about, I'd say, a few minutes for some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that some have coming are coming in. Um, Brand, do you inform parents about the temperature check practices, and what have what's been the reception to that? I, I, I do. I mean, the kids. Um, they typically communicate. I'll, I throw it in my syllabus. It's in my syllabus that I will mm -hmm. periodically uh, check on the well-being of my kids by, you know, doing temperature check. Um, I, I tell them that's also where I put my formative assessments in. Um, you know, when it comes to sharing information that kids have shared with kids, obviously to preserve the trust. If it's not something that's mandatory reporter thing or anything like that, then um, I'll usually talk to the kids. I'll say, hey, you know, I think your parents need to know this. Um, do you want me to talk to them? Do you want to talk to them? Uh, what's the plan for it? You know, um, but yeah, I notify parents that I do this uh, in my syllabus. Yeah, uh, I think that's awesome. Um, uh, another question, what's the power of having an entire staff commit to do this once a week in a building? And I think you spoke a little bit to this. Uh, and the difference between having it be something that's mandated versus something that's a, a choice, because I think that there's a lot that goes into that. And when we're forced to do something, we are less, uh, yeah. if we don't know the why, our own why. Yeah. Yeah, they call it psychological reactants, right? It's, it's yeah. a defense mechanism. You tell somebody they have to do it. Well, now that I have to, I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> um, and we see that with adults as much as we see with kids. Uh, and this really is about adult behavior. Uh, yeah. We're centered on adult behavior here. You know, what's really cool is my kids, my students do this in my leadership class. Uh, they lead little small groups and, and our student leaders do temperature checks in their own teams, uh, which is really cool. Uh, but anyway, that's a side note. Um, I, I would say, you know, I don't think it's something that you should make mandatory. Uh, I think it um, it should be something we should want to do. Uh, it's something that I think we should feel compelled to do as teachers, mm -hmm. ask our kids how they're doing and, and ask all of them. I'll tell you, for my students that are a little more shy, um, that student that told me that he was thinking about ending his life, he was um, the one of the quietest kids I've ever had as a student. And he would not wear how he was doing on his sleeve at all. And and uh, and so for the kids that aren't going to be, you know, outward with how they're doing, this is a really strong tool to use. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think it's ideal. But the second you get into you have to do this, you're going to you're going to get psychological reactions for people like, I don't want to now. Uh, this is, you know, this is stupid. You make me do it. Uh, and it's and not at all. A negative outcome because it could break more relationships than it'll ever build if so. I guess Correct. for educators out there, administrators out there, you know, let it know the power of it and know the power of it. I, I'm a big fan of modeling, modeling it and, and, you know, uh, showing the the power of it by actually doing it yourself. If you're an administrator, you can say, hey, I, I'm not going to demand this of you, but I just want to show you the power of it. Uh, and so I'm going to do it myself. And, um, and you know, it's a way, admin, you don't get to get out to every classroom. You don't get to be in contact with every teacher every day. And so this is a way for you to reach out to them uh, and see how they're doing and, and be a, a leader in their life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how has this, and we'll, I think we'll end on this one, um, is how has this changed you, Brian, as a teacher? Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't recognize the teacher I was before I started this. Um, uh, I think empathy is probably the biggest um, change in, in who I am. I, I can't tell you the last time that I lost my temper in a classroom. Um, it's been older than seven years. You know, I'm just like, I, 
I just know my kids and I know uh, how they're doing. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to be mad at, at somebody who's breaking an expectation of yours in your classroom when you know what's going on in their life behind the scenes, you know? And, um, and it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm, I tell the kids on the first day of school, my name is Brian Slater. Uh, I'm aiming for Mr. Slater. Uh, but I think that Mr. is a privilege that I need to earn. And uh, I'm going to try to earn it by being patient and kind and respectful and humble and honest and committed, what we call our eight essentials, uh, to you. And, um, and, and it's amazing how many of the toughest kids will come up to me after that and they'll do things like, hey, Mr. Slater, have a good day. And they'll like kind of smirk a little bit like I just called you Mr. Yeah. Even though you said I could call you Brian. Um, I think that, you know. Uh, teaching is a privilege. Obviously, it's something we've earned as as educators. We went to school. We work hard to become teachers. We work hard day in and day out in the trenches. Uh, but that's not permanent. And, and uh, influence is not permanent. And so this has allowed me to just better empathize with my kids and frankly, um, practice my own values and empathize with my kids. And, and, um, and as a result, I just I just feel like um, I'm able to 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 be better what to, to be what they need from mm -hmm. teachers. Uh, so. Oh, Brian, thank you so much. I feel like we could talk all day. <laughs> on I, I, I definitely can talk and all I'm day. I'm sure that there are um, tons of questions that will continue to come in. So if you didn't get your question answered, please know that um, we are going to send some information. You'll get the slides, you'll get um, some samples uh, that we'll send in the follow up uh, email. So everybody who is here, or everybody who is registered is going to get that. And so thank you all for um, being a part of this today. And uh, we look forward to hearing stories out of your classroom of how the temperature check has uh, helped. Um, if you have not been to one of our trainings or if you have been and you loved it, because if you've been, you of course loved it, uh, check to see which training is coming near you so that, uh, I mean, it's it's all about this, you know, it's, it's about, it's focused on that serve model. And um, what, are, what are the ways that um, we are being really intentional about building relationships and building culture that we want to see on our campuses. Uh, and so check out which one is near you. And um, real quick about these educators. Yeah, right? These things are incredible. Um, I, I, you know, I've had the privilege of leading a couple of these on the weekends and it's amazing what kind of feedback we get from teachers. They'll come in, they'll say, uh, you know, I came in like we, me and uh, um, John Norland did one last January in Tri City. Shout out Kennewick, uh, and <laughs> we got some feedback. You know, I came in. It was the weekend before we came back from break, and I was really like, "Why did I do this? Why did I sign up for Saturday and Sunday before break?" And then I left more energized for the school year than I would have ever been had I just spent the weekend at home. Um, they are profound. Uh, and important, and, and I'm, I'm not joking, I've had 30, 40 year educators come up and tell me to my face that that was the single most transformational training they've ever been to uh, in their entire career. And so I can't tell you enough uh, about how um, just incredible the trainings are. And I know obviously I'm, I'm biased, but trust me, like I, I have people <laughs> coming up to me after the training has ended, they're not rushing home, they're yeah. coming up to say, you know, hey, thank you. So. It, they're they're really really powerful. Would encourage all y'all out there to watch watching to, to to try to get out to one of these in your career sometime. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank, Thank you everybody you. for being here. You. Thank you. Have a good uh, <laughs> rest of the school year. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay.